This diagram shows the gravitation field around the Earth. As you can see, the gravitation field is, getting, is radial and it's getting stronger towards uh, the closer you are towards the planet. This one shows the gravitation field from the moon as well in the red. And as you can see, it's weaker in general because the moon is, uh, has less mass, so the arrows are uh, smaller overall. How do we get the resultant? So this diagram shows the overall uh, resultant gravitation field, when you, which you get by adding up the gravitation field from the Earth and the Moon uh, together. This is how you add it up. You add up. The, if you zoom in, you can add up, for example, here by uh, doing tip to tail using e either a scale diagram, or you can, if you're very good, you can use trigonometry to figure out the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So you can see, uh, for example, in this region here the gravitation field is probably going to be zero because of uh, force acting opposite direction, so they'll cancel out. This diagram is asking us to figure out the gravitation field at x and at y. This is this problem is easier than the one before because it's one dimensional. Um, so at x, the yellow uh, mass, the object, is going to pull this one with a force towards right at point x. So we're going to have to use Newton's uh, law of gravitation, but we're going to use the g equals g m of r squared, where m is the mass of the object in the pulling, um, the bigger mass in this case, the yellow one, and r is the distance from the center of that mass to the point that you're interested in. Normally, this, if it's another object, it's going to be the center of that object. So the distance we need to use for uh, the force from the yellow at point x is going to be this distance. Okay, which is going to be 50 minus 10. So the gravitational field strength there is going to be g, which is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, but I'm not going to write that down, times 120 over 40 squared. Okay, that's the distance between those two. Now, the blue mass is going to pull it in this direction. Okay, so the blue, what is the, how do we figure out the force from the blue? So we'll, you have to use figure out the field there as well. That's going to be g times the mass of the blue planet, because that's the answer the pulling, times the dis over the distance uh, from x to the center of that squared. So this, this distance here, 10 squared. Okay. So what we need to do is now we need to figure out the total. So this one, it turns out if you do, if you figure out using g, you get a total towards the left. The one, the force towards the left is bigger. So the resultant force is going to be towards the left, and it's 1.50 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, now at y, the situation is slightly different because the f both masses are going to pull it towards the right. Let's figure out the force from the blue one first this time. So here it's going to be g. Uh, but the mass of the blue mat is uh, is 30 over the distance from y to the center of that is 10 squared, which is actually the same as the one over here. Okay, uh, the force from the yellow mass. So if we need to figure out the force from the yellow mass, it's going to be g equals g times the mass of the yellow mass is 20. The distance that we need to use is all the way from here we the center, uh, to the center. It's actually going to be 50 plus 10, so it's 60 squared. Okay, so in this case, if you add these two forces, um, it doesn't matter which one's bigger or which one's smaller, they're both forces are going to be towards the right. That add up to give you 2.22 times into minus 11 newtons per kilogram. So these are gravitational fields.